Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guy, Bear Wozniak, coming to you from Waikiki Beach, right next to St. Augustine's Catholic Church. We always like to invite people. If you're going to be in Hawaii, why not go to deepadventure.com and uh, send us a, uh, an email us through the, via the contact form, and maybe we can have a cup of coffee or even go surfing with you. Uh, so we have as our guest today, Ed Rossman. We're going to be talking about really how do you how do you um, ex- your, your, how does your journey, how does your path go when you're, when you're going through a real trial in your life and uh, how, the Lord, how the Lord intervenes and how the Lord um, gives you wings and what our, what our response to God's, the, God's grace during that time of grit. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Soup up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to let everybody know that our TV show, Long Ride Home, the new season four is airing now on EWTN. It's the it's the fourth season. It's eleven episodes, all filmed in Hawaii with the with the same crew, the motorcycle uh, pack that rides with me. So we invite you to go to EWTN or go to Prime Video and watch it, or go to our website deepadventure.com and become a member of the Mama Bears or Bears Man Cave, and you can get all thirty three episodes of of our TV series, uh, the secret YouTube. Uh, listings for that so we're here today you know i want to open up the conversation this way um i've had cancer uh my son who does our production on this uh series has cancer has fought cancer um in fact the the statistics are that somewhere between one and four or 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 more uh in america at some point will be battling cancer and uh and so i thought it would be really interesting to actually kind of go into that that journey and uh, have kind of a talk story with a uh, gentleman, Ed Rossman, who, who uh, had throat cancer. And I think it's just something, maybe we can, inf- more, of, more than just an interview, but actually have a dialogue about this because uh, it was quite a journey that I personally went through, my wife went through, everyone in your life goes through when you, when you have cancer. It's, it's almost harder for them because they watch you go through it. But I'm on the other side of that journey now. Uh, I had, I had uh, prostate cancer, had radiation treatment. It was pretty gnarly. Um, I'll say, um, it resulted in some radiated tissue, uh, in my hip. I was surfing in my outrigger canoe and I tore a muscle loose in my hip that had been radiated. And then because I was out of shape, I was standing up paddle surfing, tore a bicep loose and then had, had different surgeries and then had related infections and, and came out of that. And now I'm on the other side of it. And then I got to get COVID and now I'm on the other side of that. And so for the, so it's been interesting three year journey. And now, uh, and now I just find myself uh, becoming springing back to life, uh, being able to walk several miles now. Again, my muscle in my hip is, is, was reattached and going through all that rehab. Uh, uh, I think I went to, people don't know this, but I probably had over 200 hospital visits in a three-year period or, or therapy visits, you know, all together. It takes a big chunk out of your life. Uh, and so I haven't really opened up about that conversation at all. And I thought having my guest Ed Rossman with me who went through throat cancer would be a great way to, to kind of have that conversation and to give everybody hope and uh, and to just thank the Lord for healing me. So, Ed Rossman, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Thanks, Bear. Aloha. Glad to uh, see you again. You know, I know you're a golfer. Uh, I, I uh, It's interesting after having that, that, going through all of that and what it was like for me just to walk, uh, just, just to take a full swing at a golf club again because I couldn't... Uh, I was restricted in my hip muscle because it was torn loose. You know, it took me almost two years to get that dealt with, and just walking up from the uh, from the sand trap I usually find to get back and crawling back out of the sand trap, it was quite a lot of work, and it's been really beautiful now because I can do a full swing. I don't think about my hip muscle being torn again. And but I see several trophies behind you. Do you want to start with the smallest one and work your way up to the biggest one? What are those trophies? Are those golfing trophies? Oh, the. The bigger one was actually for the the team that I was with because we had uh, achieved a, a championship during our Monday Night Men's League. Yeah. Uh, but the the smaller one, that's the individual one. That's the number one for a hole in one uh, that I got in uh, on May twelfth this year. You got it this uh, year. 
Yes. Oh, my and, gosh. Uh, so after all this cancer that you went through, you're out on the golf course again. And tell us about it. Where were you? What oh, yeah. happened? Oh, well, that was great. The, uh, the hole-in-one was good. It was like, you know, it was a 89-yard par three, clocked it with a uh, seven iron, and it just mm. went straight up. I was able to see it go in the, uh, the cup. My buddies were all happy. But there, I was doing it at 9 in the morning, this small par 3 course in Cleveland, Ohio. Yeah. And the clubhouse wasn't full, and they didn't serve alcohol. So I couldn't buy the clubhouse around. Oh, but I waited you, you... instead. Yeah, yeah. I, I saved myself hundreds of dollars. Uh, but I did, uh, when I was with the Monday Night Men's League uh, that following weekend, I got around for people there. That so. is so cool. You know, my wife uh, golfs with me on occasion. She's not a golfer, but she does it because she loves me. And... I, when we first started golfing together uh, a few years ago, uh, I think it was on her second or third time golfing, she got a hole in one. It just really makes me angry. Oh, but that son can, of a gun. Can I well, tell you about – oh, go ahead. I was going to say, my first time golfing after cancer, I was so stress-free. People know you're a golfer. You know, sometimes golf can be stressful. You're trying to remember a thousand things. Yeah. And I remember <laughs> that I was I was finally well enough. I had had a food tube in my solar plexus and they had taken that out about a couple of months earlier i was still wearing a port to be able to right. get uh chemotherapy yeah and uh all that stuff was like you know going on but i didn't care because i was alive and right the Lord let me live through that and i was just i had one of the best rounds of my life i don't even remember the but you, score but you weren't even trying because you're just like just glad to be there right Exactly. It was one of the best rounds of my life because of that, because I was just grateful to be alive and out in God's nature. Golf courses are like, you know, just beautiful places Aren't they? With, with three of my buddies that were like, you know, had like, you know, been with me through the whole thing. And it was great. Yeah. It was a good time. You know, my, my son, Jeremiah, is in, in uh, taking staff training right now. He's with FEMA. He's in Kansas City. And, and, the, and the training course is right next to this golf course. And he, <laughs> he played yesterday and he said, you know, it's interesting about a golf course. It's the most serene place you can be with the most cussing you've ever heard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of that contrast. They say that the reason why they, the reason why they gave it the name golf is because of all the other four letter words were, were already used. You know, so yeah. yeah but I, I have a spell before we get digging into this. I got to tell you, I, I had a special tournament uh, award that I received two months ago. I surf with a, a, the MGA, which is called the Mediocre Golf Association. <laughs> and I had been, go I hadn't golfed all year, and I got the worst score of everyone in the tournament. And so I won a special award. It's a it's a red key that gives me the right to tee off from the ladies' red tee box, right? <laughs> and so then the next the next tournament, I thought, okay, I, I I got it attached to my clubs. I'm so proud of that red tee. Anytime I want to, I can use that. And uh, and so, but you're required to use it the next week, the next tournament. And so I did, and I was thinking. That's good and that's bad because what if I it still is. what if I still get the worst score? You know? <laughs> but I love the game of golf and and as most golfers would say, they're ter I'm terrible at it. You know, so but we're glad to have you on. And you know, it's interesting. Um, um, you know, this process that you've been through. But let's first just talk about you. You have an interesting background because you you're you professionally you were I believe you were a broadcaster, but you're but you were also a librarian, right? Yes, I started off my career at the. Uh, uh, college radio and from there yeah. at cleveland cleveland state that's that actually turned me around to uh focusing more on academics because before that i was just uh, partying through life and yeah. i went up to the radio station show me a, a wall of records like you have a wall of books mm -hmm. and it was just i thought that was the coolest place so i, I really got so interested too. yeah in the uh communications i went to ohio university for a master's in uh, specialized in radio and tv and communications and uh worked at about 50 different radio stations and tv stations installing software in the 1980s so it was a big transition when everything was going over yeah manually to computers yeah but uh, eventually i ended up out in uh, denver colorado and i started working for a classical radio station there i was a business manager with them and a news producer and then made it back to my home in uh, cleveland ohio as a business manager for an alternative station here and uh, that was great but then there was a big company you probably remember uh, clear channel communications now yes, they're uh -huh. iheart and they they bought up all the stations in cleveland laid off a lot of people including myself and i had just started in 1995 a website for the station it was one of the first websites yeah. in cleveland yeah. and i could see that that was going to be the future and i hooked up with a couple of computer people we started this website 
And they said, uh, Clear Channel said, well, what's a website? And I said, it's going to be big. You know, believe me. Can I have the rights to, like, you know, to manage this for you? So I carried on the station's website for the next five years, but I needed a paying job. And the library down the street from me, Lakewood Public Library, had off, had a business office position. But when I met with the director, he said, no, Ed, your skill set is, is better than what we need in the business office. We need you up in the technology center. So you know how to talk to people. You understand computers. Big you know, you'll be perfect for that job. Yeah, so it's still communications as far as I do. I love my mission in life is basically i love to see the light bulb go off over people's heads yeah and whether it's communications using the website to extend our audience and educate people more about the music or just using websites and teaching people about computers at the library we got to take a break we're talking with ed rossman ed before we uh take this break real quick is there one place that they can go to find you or email or website that they can find you now if anyone wants to Uh, facebook.com facebook.com slash guys guide the throat cancer oh interesting okay we'll be right back with more of the bear wozniak adventure now you can journey with other men on the adventure of a lifetime growing in manly virtue through bears man cave community in our three-year school of manliness join at deepadventure.com better yet you can lead your own sons through the same compelling video audio and written content Can you imagine how much deeper your relationship with your dad could have been and how much more you could have learned and pitfalls you might have avoided if your dad had a tool like this to help to draw you both into a deeper, life-changing discussion? Now you have a trigger that you can pull that will take you into gritty discussions with other men and with your sons at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on Amazon.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, this is Bear Wozniak. Uh, Our show is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. And why do we call it that? Because everyone is actually on an adventure. If you let yourself be on an adventure, I remember like, I think it's in the Lord of the Rings when when, uh, I forget the person's name now, the Hobbit says... He decides he's going to go on this journey, and he says, I wonder what kind of adventure this is going to be. And I think we should all have that sense of adventure in our lives. We have Ed Rossman with us, who's kind of been on a— uh, it's interesting looking back at life, how, how the Lord takes you in different paths on your life. And, you know, I'll just say, Ed, when I went to Baylor University, and I remember I took a radio class. I really was interested in that. This is way back in the day. And I wanted to do radio. But I go, so what's the future in radio? They go, well, you're probably going to end up selling— commercials you're probably gonna go out hitting the streets selling commercials you don't make a lot of money in radio uh and so i became a cpa instead but could be uh, really because i wanted to uh have a family and have children and i thought that was a better path for me and it's been a good it's been good for me and it's interesting how i come full circle and and now i have a radio show because so the lord plants those desires early and then later in your life you may harvest them but i just want to ask you one question do you know who esau wood is Esau wood sounds familiar is it an actor? You don't remember having to learn that poem? You had to learn how to enunciate 
Esau would wood saw wood with a wood saw. And one day, uh-huh. wood saw saw a wood saw wood like no other wood saw wood saw wood saw wood. And I never saw wood saw saw wood like the wood saw wood saw wood saw wood. So that was our, we had to learn how to be able to express that in a way that people could understand, you know, to, you know, understand it. So anyway, I just thought you might know that same, that same gambit. No, I, I was never in a formal DJ training uh, class. Okay. I speech in, at Cleveland State, but not uh, some, nothing I, I can remember like that. Well, Good let, tongue twister, let, though. I like those. Yeah. Well, let, let's talk story a little bit about your personal journey with the Lord and your, your walk with, uh, with Jesus. Your own. Can you give us a little bit of your background on your, that journey? Just your, your walk yeah, with the Lord. Yeah. My, uh, my sickness, uh, I was uh, diagnosed in 2017. And uh, in January 2017, we had lost my mom suddenly. Uh, due to complications from a surgery and in the fall of 2017 my sister developed a brain tumor and uh, in November I had so I saw I found a lump on my neck and I was like oh my gosh you know it's probably swollen glands I was the main caretaker for Betty and I was there with her almost every day and I didn't want her to get infected she I knew she had a lower immune system so I went into the doctor first thing and I said hey can you give me some penicillin or whatever to wipe this out and he said no, uh, I think it's more than that. Go get a scan. So I got a scan, and we found out it was a, uh, a tumor and scheduled uh, surgery. And Betty and I were in the hospitals uh, both at the same time, two no different ones. No way. Wow. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, she succumbed to her uh, brain tumor in December of 2017. And I pushed off my main treatments. After I had the tumor removed, they wanted me to uh, have chemo and radiation because there was still some down there. And I said, well, you know, I got to wait until this thing's done. So I like, you know, took care of Betty's estate and the various other things that were needed at that time. And then in January, late January, I started the chemo and radiation treatments. And it taught me a a smart thing, which I a scripture passage. I remember uh, I found earlier uh, afterwards, be on your guard, stand firm in the faith, be men of courage, be strong. That's from first Corinthians. And with that, it's a lot of guys will see warning signs about cancer. I don't know if you did with your prostate. I know my dad did, and he ignored it. I could have ignored this lump on my throat and just bolt through and said, hey, I'll wait for it to go down. But it ended up being stage 4B. They said if I would have waited longer before telling them about it, I would uh, it probably would have been fatal. About 50% of the people who get my kind of cancer uh, pass away. So that was like, you know, that was one of the main things that the, I learned. But the... Uh, uh, in 2018, when I started my cancer treatments, I, t- I, I was self-imposed lockdown. You know, we were still concerned about immune uh, immunization and stuff like that. It was before COVID, so couldn't go to mass. But I used a book, a mislet called The Word Among Us. Mm. And that's got daily mass readings and the scriptures. Uh, I could follow along to mass each day. So that's what I did. It's, they did That was way before all the other churches started Zooming their masses. Well, did you did you have a walk with the Lord prior to that? I wanted to go back to that. I was a cradle Catholic. Um, I was a uh, uh, always observant, you know, followed the commandments and uh, went to church on a regular basis, no matter what city I was in. Um, I even went when I was down in Durango and went to a Spanish language mass on a, a Sunday just because I wanted to go to mass. And the uh, like, you know, that was the only one that was available there, uh, which was great. It was a great experience. You know, the, the, the Catholic Church is like McDonald's, isn't it? When you travel They're around, the, when you travel around the world, you go to Croatia, you go to Greece, you go to Mexico, you go to Ireland, you go to Italy, you go to France. I mean, wherever you go, you go into mass, and even maybe it's not in the language you know, it's mm-hmm. the it's the same franchise. It's the same. Yes. It's the same thing, and it, there's beauty in that. That it is a one holy Catholic church. It's a universal church. We're all reading the same scriptures at mass that day all over the world. You know whatever the mass readings are for the day, and we're celebrating the Eucharist. We're all this, the 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 the, saint, the epiclesis, the sanctification of the host, is is always the same prayer. It's the same. It's the same wherever we go, and it's the only, I you know. So it's kind of like McDonald's in that in that respect. It's kind of like there's a real unity when you go into a yes. church, and there. Although I know, like in some areas, uh, uh, you know where you go, you, the women have to wear long dresses or something. They'll have dresses you can 
put on you near know, certain certain tr- local traditions right but uh-huh. wherever you go the catholic church is the catholic church um but also it's it gives you a feeling of home like i had yes. grown up going to masses every day i went to uh, yeah. catholic grade school and we went to quite a few masses but whether or not i was working in florida or connecticut or anywhere i could still go stop into a church i like you know had no connections with outside of it being the uh the catholic one so i would know that with the calendar and the order of the mass and yes. uh, everything is and even it was, if- it was a good experience and and then when i was sick of course i couldn't go although i did have uh i did tease that uh there was a, a feast day called the feast of saint blaze where they blessed the throats yes and uh i went to mass that morning because i was i was saying well the heck with the immune thing I'll, I'll i'll risk this one so i went to have the priest bless my throat and afterwards i came back to him i said uh Hey, Father Jim, I was going to have you bless my food tube, but I figured that would freak people out if I opened my shirt and you were <laughs> blessing that. He said, no, the blessing's good for the whole body, Ed. Yes, amen. Said, okay, amen. good. You know, the, the but, thing, go ahead. It, it was like, but that's always been the source of strength, you know, as far as uh, my life's concerned. And uh, the walk with the Lord, walk with Jesus, uh, my guardian angel, you know, they've all been friends to me, and I feel very blessed that I've been able to, progress as far as I can and now help other educate other people about this uh, pain in the butt disease yeah you know the uh, it's beautiful what you said about your guardian angel we so often neglect or forget our guardian angels and forget to thank them and forget to ask them for help but um, it's beautiful because Jesus affirmed the guardian angel he said talked about how the guardian angel is always before the face of the father you know the, the, the our guardian angel always is with the Lord and yet always with us too and uh, and is there to help us uh, you know the the uh, when you receive the diagnosis, I know uh, someone I know when they received the diagnosis, they kind of had a real manly response to the doctor. They said, "Well, doc, is this a is this a death sentence?" Because that's the first thing you think of. And the doctor said, "No, it doesn't have to be. We can fight it." But it really is a battle. Um, did you find? Well, let's this one scripture verse that you quote here is from the Book of Wisdom, which is not found in the Protestant Bible. In case you're wondering why you may, you may not be familiar, if you're Protestant listening, from the Book of Wisdom, the Lord the Lord granted him a stern struggle, mm-hmm. that he might know what godliness is, more powerful than anything else. What yes. did that verse mean to you? How did you find that verse? Um, that was coincidentally that was one of the verses that came up when I was on the uh, like you know, going through my treatments and uh, one of the things I was doing was I was a uh, have you heard of caring bridge yes of course yeah anyone that's been through this or has a yeah. friend that has yes it's a good caring bridge is a, for those of you who don't know is a, a social media platform and I was using that to communicate yes. to all my uh, buddies and career friends and family it, and people it, like it, that it's primarily for people that are going through a medical issue Right. right. And uh, keeps them up to date on things. Yeah. As I was going through the word among us, when I would find a good phrase like that, a good verse, I would post that and then talk about it in the context of what I was going through. And in that particular one, that was because of like, you know, my sister and my uh, mom's recent experience. My family was all worried about like, you know, oh, is Eddie going to be next? And uh, pretty much I use that verse as well as others to help like you know uh, calm their fears and that's one of the things that uh, I just felt uh, that the Lord pulled out of me and just not let everybody else there's like you know dozens of people around who think you might be next and they're already upset and grieving over your sister and your mom uh, mm-hmm. my dad especially mm-hmm. so it was like one of those things where okay I had to use uh, and that and that verse is a good one as far as like you know letting people know that you will be tested, but being a godly person, you will pull through. Well, one way or the other, you know, yeah. uh, because because I love that that verse in Daniel when they're thrown into the lion's den and they go, well, whether we God is able, whether God chooses to or not, our God is totally able to save us. But God, God may have a different plan, you know, so we so but whatever it is, we say yes to God. We, you know, we say that that prayer thy will be done we're talking with ed rossman we'll be right back with more of the bear wasnick adventure this is dan laboon markham with another episode of country up humility lots of folks equate humility with weakness true 
There is false humility, which can be just another name for downright cowardliness or shiftiness. But true humility takes a unique sort of courage, takes self-control. In fact, in the original language of the New Testament, the base word for humility means controlled strength. It goes like this. I have the right and the power to enforce being bright, but I choose to be otherwise. It takes real restraint, especially when emotions get revved up. I've learned for the most part to tame reacting to my emotions. The hardest for me is to exercise restraint when I see a bully in operation, like giving a waitress ill treatment. Gets my dander up serious bad. Now stop and consider how God did it. The all-powerful, present, everywhere, and all-knowing God chose to come to us in the form of a frail human body that got tired, got hungry, and sweated drops of blood even allow himself to be beaten and pinned to a cross, when he could have called legions of angels to his rescue. Had to tell his boys who wanted to call down fire from heaven that fire and destruction were not the way to respond when having a sense of being wronged. The rugged John the Baptist, you know, he was a true warrior, had a warrior spirit. Yet John the Baptist said of Jesus, he must increase and then of himself, I must decrease. Not many of us willing to sacrifice our power and position. It takes a real man to be humble. It takes sacrifice, self-restraint, and courage. In God's economy, humility is hot, and unbridled pride and passion are not. This is Dan LeBoon Markham at countryup.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. We invite our mama bears to join with us at deepadventure.com. You'll have access to all of the Long Ride Home TV shows even before they air on EWTN. Plus, three years of the shareable Ocean Sunrise daily catechism videos. Plus, at deepadventure.com, a 20% discount at our online store with all of our great t-shirts and clothes and books and rosaries and medals and all kinds of accessories. You'll also get an autographed copy of Bear's latest book, And for a limited time, a Catholic biker stuffed teddy bear. All at deepadventure.com. Come on, Mama Bears, let's hear you roar. Did you know that each Saturday morning you can receive the shareable YouTube video version of the Bear Wozniak Adventure in our inspiring weekly newsletter, even before it airs on the radio or hits the podcast apps? Never miss another episode. You can even binge watch Bear's inspiring guests. Think about the impact you can have sharing these videos with your friends. Go to deepadventure.com and click the subscribe button. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. My wife always asks me to make the sign of the cross before one of our radio segments in Hawaiian. She loves it so much. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, I want to remind people, my dad uh, was a Catholic deacon at the church in Lahaina, Maria Lanakila Church. It means Maria, Our Lady of Victory. And when the great fire uh, consumed that church, my mother and father are both uh, gone now. They're both in heaven, but uh, both very saintly people. But uh, when it consumed that whole town in just moments, the town was gone. Uh, the only thing left standing was the Catholic Church. Not the, even the Catholic school, just the church. And uh, within that church is the Eucharist, you know, uh, and uh, and so this, a church like the Catholic Church isn't just like any church. It's not a symbol of hope. It's hope itself because within that church is the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ, who is our only hope. And we have with us today Ed Rossman, who, like myself and like one of my children, has gone through uh, the battle with cancer. And when you when you have that happen, Ed, I had to. I really had really no doubt that I would uh, that I would make it through, but. But um, there is that moment of realization when you pray this beautiful prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. 
Now, when I go out in the mornings, when I go out during the day and I have my long one hour uh, time out in the water, I pray that prayer. And thy, that word, thy will be done, is on my other desk. Um, uh, I, the, that scripture verse is right there. To me, it's the most dangerous prayer ever pr prayed by a man. That was when Jesus said to the Lord on the Mount of Olives, "Thy will." When when he prayed that uh, that same simil similarly he prayed that on the Mount of Olives when he said, "Nevertheless, not my will, but Thy will be done." It's a dangerous prayer uh, because it 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 uh, it's an invasion of of uh, of heaven on earth. When you say, because the kingdom of God is wherever God's will is being done. And so to say to God, thy will be done, that's a dangerous prayer to the enemy. And it's also a dangerous prayer for us because you don't know what it's going to require of you. So when, you, when you're facing an illness like that, you say, Lord, heal me, but nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. And, uh, and, and so you and my son and I have both been through the battle with cancer and come out on the other side. Many of our friends have not. Nevertheless, thy will be done. You know, but you still your your kuleana is to fight the good fight and to do what need, do what you can to to um, go through all the treatments and be, ha and be come out on the other side healthy. I've also been talking with the, the various men's groups in the area, and I also have, uh, recently been equating the the struggle with the agony in the garden. Tell me, just as you were saying, like you know, thy will be done. Um, we were all going through. We're in a beautiful garden here of life. And when you're sick and when you're struggling with cancer, that's that's the point where we're doing our agony. And we have to ask for, like, you know, forgiveness as well as the strength to persevere. And uh, that's uh, that's spot on as far as the uh, using the Lord's Prayer for that. Yeah, as I said, I think I went to well over 200 m medical appointments in one form or the other over a three-year period. I don't know how I kept my radio show and my TV show and my CPA from going. Wow during all that time, except for by the Lord's grace, right? Because there's one verse that every Catholic needs to know, and that is that when I am weak, then I am strong, as Paul said. Because then you're not going on your own strength. When mm -hmm. you reach an end of yourself, you, 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 uh, your, your power comes from the Holy Spirit. St. Paul's favorite word wasn't Jesus, it wasn't holy. His favorite word was the Greek word dynamos, which means dynamite power mm -hmm. of the Holy Spirit. And there's another verse that says this, the joy of the Lord is my strength. So during these times of total battle and, and battle fatigue, you know, just tiredness, uh, because when you're going through it, not only is it exhausting to go through it, but then you can't sleep at night too because you're battling, you know, there's just so many things going on. Um, but the joy of the Lord is our strength, is a very true, very true statement. And so we, we, we turn our eyes to the Lord and oftentimes we don't even have the grace or the strength to pray, it seems like. And we ask others to pray for us, and, they, and they're carrying us along in their prayers. Which isn't a bad thing. But uh, when I was doing my uh, cancer treatments and my caring bridge things, I tried to put up posts uh, and uh, reflected a lot of these in uh, my book, uh, A Guy's Guide to Throat Cancer, uh, that basically were using the scriptures as far as, like, you know, building up strength, building up faith. Like in Matthew, Jesus says, why did you lose faith when Peter was mm. starting to walk on the water and he gets distracted by the storm? Mm. And he's reaching towards Christ. He was he believed for so far, and then all of a sudden he gets distracted. And then he falls into the water, and Jesus has to save him. And then he says to him, why did you lose faith? You know, the uh, so that's one of the things where I, I try to uh, remind people of, like, you know, don't get distracted by the storm of cancer i mean you may very well have to succumb to it but don't get distracted keep your eyes on the prize keep your eyes on jesus on your faith and then have the discipline to do what the doctors tell you have the strength to question them if they're suggesting things or they don't want to do something if you see something for yourself that you'd like to do you have to take um, a, you have to take kuleana for your own health care right i pushed uh, to get more hydration i had had some i was uh trying to be disciplined and have a, a right amount of hydration every day just like tom brady does you know he's, right my he's wife said, my lo wife loves his book on, on health and fitness uh-huh absolutely yeah. and that's where i learned that too he mm. was just like you know hydration was what kept him flexible keep bouncing mm -hmm. back mm -hmm. well with me it was more internally i don't want to mm. mess with your uh, listeners about how like you know what that 
did to me, but it didn't do good things when I mm. couldn't hydrate myself enough. So I was in there for radiation every day. So I said to him, can I go in and just Were get a bag for, of was saline? It chemo? Was it chemo or radiation? Um, I went to chemo three times, uh, but radiation 41 times. Oh, okay. Okay, got it. So I was going in concurrently while I was having the mm. chemo. Like, you know, I'd go in for eight hours for that and then get out of that. And some days they would have me do radiation. Other times they just pushed it back. Wow. wow. But the... Uh, I said, I'm here for radiation anyway. Why, why don't I just go in? And they said, mm -hmm. okay. So yeah. it was just like, you know, it wasn't anything that they thought about. I just felt in my heart that that was the best thing. It gave me a lot more energy. And uh, they actually said, my oncologist said, you know, I, I like it when people advocate for themselves. Yes. And, you know, and, and challenge me. Yes. And uh, that's one of the things John Wooden said, try I to surround John yourself Wooden. with... What did Try he say? to surround yourself with smart people who will challenge you. Right. And uh, that's what I try and do in, uh, in my life. And uh, I was lucky. I was blessed to have, too, uh, a couple of women, my sister and my girlfriend, Kathy, who would, they went to chemo class. We had a chemo class prior to my treatments. And wow. they were, they went to, and the, the chemo class taught about cleaning things and getting things yes. right. And I was a sloppy bachelor. You know, I didn't know half of what they were talking about. And uh, but they they came in and they said, no, I didn't have to do this. So they cleaned up my place. I joked with the, one of the nurses with Kathy when she was there. I said, Kathy cleaned up my bathroom so good. I thought I had a brand new faucet. <laughs> it was so shiny. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, um, we were talking again about how uh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. And when you come to an end of yourself, that's kind of where you where, where Jesus is in the Savior biz. And sometimes he allows uh, things to happen like this to help us get real with him. There's another verse that talks about joy that you have in your in your your guideline, your talk that you give. Consider it all joy. This is Jesus' words. I believe it was Jesus' words. It might have been James. Yeah, it was James who wrote this. Consider it all joy, my brothers and sisters, when you encounter various trials, for you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance, and perseverance produces faith so in the in the midst of you know think about what happened to job he was mm -hmm. a good man the bible says he was a good man but and yet he went through all these trials the, the, when the trials come they're like a blessing because it allows you to find out that you it, it gets you to the point where you have to rely on god you have to have the proper mindset for that though and that's what i hope my book uh helps people with as far as like you know getting him out of the clinical phase i mean i approach it in a light-hearted way like talking from a man cave instead of a hospital room mm -hmm. but i try to like you know emphasize too that uh, faith and spirituality are, are the things that are going to help pull you through as well as not being a stoic independent kind of guy right you know that i could do this myself you can't do it you got to involve your loved ones you got to involve that's what's Caring Bridge is so great for. I had 60 different people. Every time I put up a journal entry about anything, uh, I'd get like a dozen responses back encouraging me, uh, like giving me support and, uh, you know, those different types of things. And of course, very important. Me, all those things are like important to get through that thing of cancer, not to be necessarily by yourself. But there is a, it's definitely one of the things where uh, I was trying to share that. And it's a win win situation using the, the, the Caring Bridge what and did, the, the daily mass readings. Yeah, you know, and, 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 to, uh, and, and the, the uh, I know my wife, um, man, she was just there with me uh, every step of the way and to have that kind of help and support. We're talking with Ed Rossman about his battle and, and, and win, winning over throat cancer uh, and my own uh, victory over prostate cancer. And my, my producer today, one of my sons also went through uh, – uh, colon cancer and so it's interesting that about one in I think it's like uh, close to 40 percent of the people in the United States at some point ha are going to face this and so maybe you're one of those people right now and we're here to give you hope and encouragement that uh, that God is with you we'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure people love our EWTN TV show Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak thanks to you the show has won four different tally awards and now, instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air, you can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends 
when you go to deepadventure.com and join the Mama Bears or the Man Cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. Long Ride Home with Bear Wastick, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. When you go to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel, you get access to all of our free playlists, including hundreds of episodes of the Bear Wozniak adventure, plus the three year journey through the whole catechism in our Ocean Sunrise Catechism series. And you even get short clips and live streaming of Bear and Cindy's Adventures in Paradise videos. Go to YouTube and subscribe to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure channel. Are you still listening? I thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station. Well, you asked for it. Here is more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I want to remind everybody, you mama bears out there and you uh, the men out there to go to my website, deepadventure.com and, uh, and become a member of the mama bears, become a member of the man cave. If you do, you get this radio show sent to you before it even airs, the YouTube version of it every Saturday. You also get access to, uh, to uh, a whole years of curriculum for the women on the virtues and on the men. There's about two and a half years of curriculum, monthly curriculum. On, uh, on manliness and uh, the curriculum is really cool because it's video, it's audio, it's written, there's self-assessments. But when you become a member of the Man Cave, you also become a member of a non-Facebook community of men. We get together once a month on a Zoom meetup, but we also uh, post uh, and encourage and challenge each, each other there. I also want you to let you guys know my new book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone, is out now. And uh, I love this book. I love it more. I think it's my favorite book that I've written. And it's... Uh, it's, I think it's very timely, uh, challenging men, encouraging men, affirming manliness. I don't, people want to call it masculinity. Um, no, it's manliness. It's just plain out manliness. Uh, and the word man, by the way, the reason why I use it is the root word for man is ver in the Latin, and that's where we get the word virtue. So if you want to be manly, <laughs> uh, the challenge is to, be, is to be a man of virtue. We have our guest, Ed Rossman, who is with us, who is, he, is, he has overcome a battle with throat cancer, as my producer has also overcome a battle with, with colon cancer, and I've overcome a battle with prostate cancer. So um, uh, we, have a, we have a lot to, uh, to talk about. There's another verse that you quote in your book, and it always goes back to joy with you in some of these verses. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in mm -hmm. believing so that the pow by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. I was interviewed by... Marcus Aubrey, who is uh, the owner of On It, one of Joe Rogan's companies, they used to, he has a, a, a fitness um, podcast. I'm a, I was one of their first uh, sponsored athletes. Cool. And, uh, and he talked about my first book where I talk about the virtues of faith, justice, self-mastery, prudence, and then faith, hope, and love. And he goes, hope? Where do you get hope? Because he was used to the classic virtues. He was trained in philosophy in the classics. Mm. And I said, well, that's the theological virtues of faith, hope, and love. No, he said, hope is something you just, you just got to use the other virtues of fortitude and endurance and, and prudence and, 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 and believe in yourself and, and, and do it, get determined and do it. Didn't know what hope was. Can you tell us a little bit about having hope in the Lord during a time like this battle you had with cancer? Right. Well, that was uh, basically it comes down to, like, you know, medical science can be great, can be fantastic, but it's like... Uh, without trust in the, him upstairs, there's like, you know, sometimes there's no hope. And uh, another one that I, I don't use in the speech that much, but there's a, uh, 
a quote from Jesus in John 14, peace I live with you, my peace I give you. I don't give you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. You know, medical science can be great, it could be incredible, and we're blessed that we have access to it, but sometimes you might have that hard ending coming up. So that's where that particular quote too, don't be afraid. The uh, My peace I live with you, not as the world gives to you. So you've got to take it out of your mindset that, okay, this cancer is like, you know, it's either manageable or unmanageable. There's still Jesus and the Lord and the life that I'd like to live and the life that I pray that I'll be able to live. And then after that, to be able to, like, you know, from heaven, be able to bless those who are still fighting their life down here. I remember when we first started the man cave, we had a member join who had just just because of his cancer returned to the Lord and he found that he would go to mass uh, almost daily and he would weep when the Eucharist came and he felt it was just such a sign of weakness he was so embarrassed you know <laughs> and then he could no longer go to mass and uh, and uh, he was confused he said I don't understand because I've given my life to the Lord why aren't I receiving why aren't I being healed and so we had a conversation just a few days before he passed. And uh, I told with, I shared with him, you know, man, God's given you a victory lap. It's not like your death came suddenly to you. Uh, you, uh, the cancer came and, um, and you battled it. And through that and through the cancer, you came to your personal relationship with Jesus. And God's given you time to love those people that love you and to give praise to the Lord and love God back. But not everybody gets to take a victory lap. My own brother-in-law, Scott, died of brain cancer, I believe, as your sister did too. And I remember going to be with him in the hospital room because it hit and happened just so fast. And mm -hmm. I was with him, and I shared the same thing with him. Scott, the Lord's given you this chance to have this victory lap, to share with those people you know, a life well lived, and to share with them and to love them you know, love them back. And, you know, there's this there's this saying of the, the early church fathers, the monks of the desert prayed this pray, prayer. Memento mori, remember your death. And it's not something they made mm -hmm. up, but it was something that they would, it was the only thing they would say to each other because they had a vow of silence. And they lived in these separate caves. And they might have the book of Psalms or maybe one of the Gospels. Uh, and usually they had a skull in their in their cave to remind them um, that you know to re to remember to live their life because they to live their life like they were going to die, and when would they would come together for mass maybe once a week or once a month, the only word they would say to each other is memento mori, and it comes from the Roman tradition when a a, a general would have a victory. Uh, they called it a jubilee when he would come into or a triumph, I believe they called it when they would come into Rome, leave their uh, their armies usually on the other side of the Rubicon, but when they would yeah. come in and they'd bring all their prizes and all their the stuff that all the the stuff that they had won in their battle, um, their loot. Um, everyone would be cheering for them, but there would be a slave walking behind him just with an earshot, and he would just keep report, re repeating, Memento Mori, remember your death. You're not all that. You're not the contents of your wallet. You're not your khakis. Uh, I forget the whole word from Fight Club, but, but you know, remember your death. And so when, 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 when weakness comes and when... when uh, when uh, c cancer comes or when we know death is near, it's a, it's, it's a blessing that we have chance to get things right in our heart and to get things right with the Lord. And so what did you learn about living life now? You said the great joy you had after winning the battle and getting to just go out on the golf course again. What, what do you learn about living life like you're going to die? You know, you know you, you, it's a whole different a detachment to things that don't matter and attaching to things that do, or what, what is it like? I try and uh, use my time to help serve others. Mm. I worked with the American Cancer Society. Or I was a, a volunteer driver for a while prior to wow. COVID. Wow. And I th uh, that was a good spot for me because I had already gone through what these people were still going through. Oh, my goodness. And what a they great didn't person. have people to be able to give them rides to their cancer treatments. It's so, so important I would like to have someone to drive you. My man in mm -hmm. that case with Pat Gervais and my wife, Cindy, and I just thank him so much. Go ahead, man. Right. I was I was sick like that, too, and I depended on my dad and my brother. And a lot of times, I'm going to say the way like it is, that driving, too, was one thing, but driving back might have meant pulling over several times to take care of stuff because things would 
go awry. I had uh, I was I had a spittoon that I was using constantly, and uh, uh, I remember uh, my I, son too. I was yeah. talking and and I was like I started choking. My brother was so freaked out from that, but he said, "Oh, Eddie, you okay?" And I was like, "Yeah, I yeah, keep going," you know. But yeah. it's like yeah, it's a blessing to have that. But serving other people, like Praise you know, Lord, trying man. to educate people, keeping the like you know. I I had I thought about doing this uh, like you know just printing out the Caring Bridge entries for my, uh, the yes. people who had supported me. Yes. But I said, you know, I know I did my research. I had known that there weren't very many good books on throat cancer, uh, and I knew guys weren't the best readers in the world. And one of my librarian friends had already told me, "Oh, Ed, you're such a guy." When I was talking about the ACDC video and things like that, relation to cancer. So I figured, like, why not do this? So that's when I, I wrote the book, and I've been uh, pushing it out ever since then. What's the um, Facebook? What's the Facebook community, and how can they get a hold of the book? It's a uh, basic the uh, guy's guide to throat cancer. You could go on Amazon. You could look inside the book, uh, read some reviews. Uh, Facebook.com guy's guide to throat cancer. I update it three times a week. Uh, wow! Yesterday, I, I updated it with a note to a nod to Johnny Cash. You know, a lot of it's scripture readings, but it was uh, the uh, passing of Johnny Cash uh, 20 years ago on mm-hmm. September 12th. Love Johnny I Cash, had, man. Just a little love bit, yeah. The man and I had a black. quote up there. I love songs the about horses, railroads, land, Judgment Day, family, hard times, whiskey, and mother, and God. <laughs> hey dude, he, he, hey dude, you gotta, you should join my man cave and start posting there too. But, dude, will you send me that quote? Email it to me. Oh yeah, I'm yeah, on, I'm absolutely. On, yeah, I love Johnny Cash. You know, um, my new book, Twelve Rules for Manliness, where have all the cowboys gone? It quotes my 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 one of my favorite authors, Louis 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 Lamour, the great Western mm-hmm. writer, because all of his men were so virtuous and the women were so strong. And um, and a lot of his move, a lot of his books were made into movies, and so you you hear his words, in the words of John Wayne. So getting a little John Wayne, a little Clint Eastwood, a little Johnny Cash, that kind of thing in there in, in my book was really cool. I love. Can you get, can you give us that quote one more time as we're as we're leaving? What is it? I love songs about. It's actually a little bit longer. I love songs about horses, railroads, land, Judgment Day, family, hard times, whiskey, courtship, marriage, adultery. Separation, murder, war, prison, rambling, damnation, salvation, death, pride, determination, tragedy, rowdiness, heartbreak, and love, and mother, and God. Will you send that to me? I love it. Thank you, Ed, so much. We love all of our listeners. We know some of you are facing uh, this, this, this battle with cancer or maybe something else. Lord, we just pray thy will be done. We pray that your miraculous healing power would come to, to first take away the fear and then fill people's hearts with hope that no matter what, you are with them. But Lord, we specifically pray that the Holy Spirit would come if they're healing with your healing touch and bring total and complete healing to any of our listeners that are struggling with the challenge of health issues. And we pray for the care providers that you would encourage them and, and strengthen them and, and bless them. Until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. I wanted to say our guest is Ed Rossman one more time. And uh, until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Aloha. Thanks for listening to the Bear Wilding Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wilding Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell.